In this video, we're going to see how to read data from a database using Entity Framework Core in a Blazor web app in .NET 8. This video is in continuation to my previous two videos in my playlist where I show how to create a database and how to save data. Let's add a method to the application project for performing the read operation. So in the application project, expand the interfaces folder and double click iBook repository. Let's add a member task of list of book get all async. Now let's implement this method in the infrastructure project. So inside the infrastructure project, expand the repositories folder and double click the book repository class. Let's implement this interface. And inside the method, say var books equals await context dot books dot to list async and return books. Now let's move on to the presentation layer. In the simple book catalog Blazor web app project, expand the components folder and expand the pages folder and double click add new dot razor. Now we want to add a link to a page where we show a list of all books. So right below the submit button, let's add an anchor element with the text back to list. Set the href attribute to slash and class attribute to btn, btn secondary, shadow none. And we would like to add some margin. So say ms3. So now let's create the list component. So right click the pages folder and say add razor component and call the component list. Now we want this component to be a routable component. So add a page directive to the top, say add page and specify a route template of slash. Now before we proceed any further, I want to demonstrate a feature of Blazor in .NET 8 called enhanced navigation. So let's run the app. And as you can see here at the root URL, we have the list component rendered. Now right click the page and click inspect and click the network tab and navigate to the add new component. So here at the bottom, we have the back to list button. Now watch the loading spinner when I click the back to list button. We see that there is no blip. And on the right hand side here, we have a fetch request initiated by blazor.web.js for the list component. So instead of downloading all the assets from the server, we made a request only for the component we needed and that component was rendered and the page was not reloaded. So this improves the user experience for the application. So this means that enhanced navigation is by default enabled. But if we want to turn off enhanced navigation, we can do that too. So go back to Visual Studio and go to the add new component. And to the anchor element, let's add an attribute data enhanced nav equals false. Now run the app once again. Right click the page, click inspect and click the network tab and navigate to the add new component. Once again, watch the loading spinner when I click the back to list button. We see this time there's a blip and on the right hand side here, we see all the assets got downloaded from the server instead of making a request only for the component we needed. So this means that a page reload was going on since we turned off enhanced navigation for the link. Let's turn it back on. From the anchor element, remove the data enhanced nav attribute. Now let's work on the list component. So open list.razor and here remove the heading and use the page title component to set the title for the page which will be displayed in the browser tab. Let's set the text to book list and in the code block create a private nullable field of type list of book and call it books and we want to get the list of books from the repository. So at the top here say at inject iBook repository and call it repository. We want to get the list of all books once the component has been initialized. So we have a lifecycle method for that. So in the code block here, say protected override and choose on initialized async. And inside this method, say books equals await repository dot get all async. Notice we got the async modifier added to the method. Now let's add some razor markup for displaying these books. So at the top here, create a div with the class row justify content center. And inside that, create a div with the class call six. 
Now first let's check if books is null. So at if books is null, create a div with a class book item and inside that say loading books please wait. Otherwise we want to check if the books variable contains any books. So say else if books dot any. Let's use a for each loop to loop through the books and create a div with a class book item and inside that let's create a div with a class book card and another div with a class book card body and create a h5 heading and set the content to a razor expression so say at book dot title and after the heading say by at book dot author and let's use a vertical bar at book dot publication date since the publication date is nullable let's use a question mark dot to string and we want to display the date in the format month day comma year so let's specify the format string and finally if there are no books to be found, say div class equals book item and set the content to no books found. Now if we run the app, we can see the single book that we added in the last video. Of course the UI does not look good, we'll fix that in just a bit. But for now I'm going to bring Visual Studio and the browser side by side. And I want to create a link in the list component to navigate to the add new component. So up here, create an anchor tag with the text add new and set the href attribute to add dash new and set the class attribute to btn, btn primary, shadow none and let's add some margin at the bottom. So say mb3. Now if we want to see the page getting updated instantly, click on the drop down arrow next to the hot reload button and make sure hot reload on file save is checked. Otherwise click on it to check it and click the save button and we see the add new button on the right hand side. Now let's add some books to the catalog by clicking on the add new button. Now it's time to style the UI. So open solution explorer and right click the pages folder and select add new item. In the search bar search for CSS and click style sheet and name the file list.razor.css. Now in the list component we have a div with a class book item and we would like to style that. So inside the CSS file say dot book dash item open and close curly braces set padding to 1.5 rem and click the save button to see the changes similarly set margin bottom to 1 rem set box shadow to 0 0 0 0.5 rem and specify the color rgba 0 0 0 0 0.3 and finally let's add some border radius. Set border radius to 0.5 rem. Now that we have fixed our UI, let's talk about a couple of things. Go to list.razor and scroll down. We have this div with a class book card that displays the details of a single book. This is a good candidate for a reusable component. So copy this markup here and open solution explorer and right click the components folder and select add razor component and name the component bookcard.razor. Now replace the heading with the copied markup. So paste it here and inside the code block create a public property of type book. We need to make it required. 
Let's turn this property into a parameter so that its value can be supplied from the parent component. So decorate the property with the parameter attribute. Now in this markup here we see squiggly lines. So replace book with the book property. Now go back to the list component and instead of this markup here say book card and set the book parameter to book and now let's run the application we see that the app works just fine finally let's talk about another feature of blazor in dotnet 8 called streaming rendering let's go back to visual studio and in the list component scroll down and here we are getting book information from sql server express local db database this does not take much time but let's say the data is present on a separate database server and there is some delay involved in getting the data. Let's simulate that kind of delay for our application by using await task.delay3000. So basically we are waiting for 3000 milliseconds or 3 seconds before getting the data. So while it is taking some time to get the data that is simulated by this task.delay call, the books variable will be null. And if we scroll up, we can see we are checking if books is null, in which case we are displaying loading books, please wait message. Let's run the app. We can see we are getting the loading spinner here in the browser. And once the three seconds have elapsed, we're getting all the book data. However, we are not seeing the loading books message. This is happening because only after the book data is retrieved from the database, the page will be rendered and sent to the client browser. Till then, the page will still be loading and we won't see anything. So this definitely harms the user experience for our application. Let's turn on streaming rendering. Go back to the list component and say at attribute stream rendering. Now let's run the app. As you can see, we have the initial UI displayed. In the meantime, data is being fetched from the database. And once data is available, that data will be streamed into the response and displayed in the UI. We don't need streaming rendering for our simple application. So let's remove this attribute and remove the task.delay call as well. So that's it for this video. Hope you found the video useful. Thanks for watching.